Сьогодні теж вшановуємо 25-річчя встановлення пам'ятника на місці табору інтернованих українців в Castle Mountain в Альберті. Наступне відео підготовлено програмою Echoes of Ukraine в Калгарі та Альберта Контакт в Едмонтоні. Слава Ісусу Христу! Слава Ісусу Христу! Ревернд фатерс, гонорд гестс, комуніті мемберс і тих, хто нас нас вирішує. My name is Ulyana Vitek, interim executive member of the Ukrainian Canadian Congress Calgary branch. And it is my honor to guide you through our program today. Considering the global COVID-19 pandemic and to accommodate physical distancing while keeping everyone safe, we have scaled back this event in the form of a small private invitation to ceremony. We thank all who were able to join us today and hope others will be able to tune in via Ukrainian programs and social media. Though the global pandemic has had a profound impact on the world this year, 2020 marks other intertwined significant events. It has marked an awakening in North America on issues of social injustice. In our Canadian community, it has marked, over, marked the 100-year anniversary of the end of Canada's first national internment, internment operations, its own act of social injustice. 100 years ago, open racism towards Eastern European settlers resulted in the internment of thousands of Ukrainians and other nationalities from 1914 to 1920 under the authority of the War Measures Act. The Canadian government interned 8,579 recent immigrants from the multinational Austro-Hungarian, German and Ottoman empires. Some were Canadian born were naturalized British subjects, while most of the civilian internees came from the western Ukrainian regions of Halichina and Bukovina. My name is Boris Hodorik. I'm the chairman of the Ukrainian Canadian Civil Liberties Foundation. It was in 1987 that the Ukrainian Canadian Civil Liberties Association, UCLA, first started educating Canadians about the internment of Ukrainian Canadians during the First World War. In 1988, then Minister of Multiculturalism, Jerry Weiner, stated that, that such internment did not happen. Much has changed since then. UCLA soldiered on. Its perseverance resulted in the placement of the first trilingual bronze plaque at Fort Henry internment camp in Kingston, Ontario on August 4, 1914. Difficult negotiations with Parks Canada ensued. The result was the unveiling of what is behind me on August 12, 1995. Canada's first statue commemorated internment and a trilingual bronze plaque. I am personally thankful that we per persevered in our negotiations and that we are able to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the unveiling of the Castle Mountain internment camp statue and plaque. But that was just the beginning. Various government ministers and MPs began expressing their support for acknowledgement of the internment. It took until November 2005 when Dauphin Manitoba Member of Parliament, Inky Mark, his bill C311, sorry, C331, was passed and the Government of Canada was now obligated to negotiate with the Ukrainian Canadian community for an honourable settlement acknowledging that the internment of thousands of Ukrainians and other nationalities was unwarranted and unjust. It took until May 2008 for an agreement to be reached with the Government of Canada. At that time, 
representatives of the Ukraine Canadian community finalized such an agreement, which provided for the creation of the endowment fund, the Canadian First World War Interment Recognition Fund, to support commemorative, educational, scholarly, cultural projects intended to remind all Canadians of this episode in our nation's history. Я називаюся Галя Липська Вилсон, і мені сьогодні дуже приємно привітати вас тут біля цього пам'ятника. Чудові спомини ми маємо тих часів, як Борис вже вам сказав, ми працювали як українська калгарська громада, щоб відзначити, що сталося з інтернованням наших українців. Twenty years ago, our Ukrainian Calgary community gathered at Castle Mountain to unveil the statue, Why? to commemorate our Ukrainian internees. Many of our seniors who stood together for a photo are no longer with us. I'm so pleased to see that Mrs. Pani Katerina Sederuk is here with us today. So it's not just me and Boris, but also Boris's mother. Our community was very supportive and probably had the most attended unveiling in Canada. Two buses and many others attended by car from all parts of Canada. And I understand there were approximately 400 people here that day. Thank you for your invitation to speak at this very important occasion as a descendant of an attorney here at Castle Mountain. My step-grandfather, Harry Levitsky, was interned at this camp. You know, as a descendant, I was not, I was not given the opportunity to talk to my step-grandfather because nobody spoke about it. Why was that? Tumu, tumu. Was it shame? Was it wanting to forget it? I suspect it was the inner pain. I found out later, much later, when I learned about the publicity and the education and the government lobbying for reparation that Boris here and Halya and Lubomir Lechuk and Bogdan Kardan and John Gregorovich and a lot of other members of the of UCLA. They were the ones who actually made this happen. I learned from them. You know, this internment changed lives, as was mentioned here. It changed the history of the Ukrainian community right across Canada. And I often wonder what would have become of my step-grandfather had he not been interned, had he not been carrying that pain that he had to live with all his life. You know, I have two thoughts about the internment. First, you know, the anger and the rage that we have held are not helpful to anyone because you cannot change history. But you can, as Boris and Halya and Ukla have been doing, you can educate people about history. You can educate them through the schools. You can write books, you can make films, you can write articles, you can go on the internet, you can talk to people. That is so important. We, can't, we have to keep, continue educating people. You put up information cairns like this one, beauty, beautiful ones. And you shout at the top of the mountain. The facts and the stories. The second point I have is you need you need to forgive.